Is that not? Is this new leader? Fuck, did it make new leader? Is that not a Fugazi? Is that not a Ponzi scheme? Tell me honestly, is that not a Ponzi scheme? It's not a Fugazi. It is a Fugazi. It is a Ponzi scheme. That's literally Ponzi and Ponzi, bro. That is that is, that is trademark Ponzi. The fact that you could just uh, if everyone like a million people took out their money, all their money from the bank, come back crash. That's the biggest Ponzi scheme ever. And that money is just a number on the screen that we're all uh, that's an arbitrary number on the screen that we're all happy with. It's fucking. Listen guys, what should you take advice from? And don't take advice from the wrong person because it will cost you. The person that will suffer the most from taking advice from the, from the wrong person will be you. Grant Cardone said it best. When buying his private jet, he consulted both people that are making much less money than him, 10 times less than him, like in his words, and 10 times more than him. His favorite phrase is 10x. I quite like it as well, 10x. I'll 10x it. I'll, do, I'll go above and beyond, not two times, 10x, I like that. He said similar line, along the lines of, I could talk to people that were below me, 10x, earning 10 times less income than me, would actually get a private jet for like 3 million, and people that are earning 10 times more than me, who, who grew, to get a private jet for 3 million, same as that price, same as that private jet, different people with, with different incomes. And the people that are poorer than him, 10 times poorer, advise him not to get the private jet, However, people that were richer than him, 10 times, thought of to, to get the private jet because it would save him an immense amount of time. And time is invaluable. Even a billionaire can't afford to waste time. So why are you wasting time? And he said uh, at the end of the video, which I found really interesting, what are you taking advice from? Because you're taking advice from the wrong person, it's going to cost you. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. See you guys in the next one. Sign on. Damn, the video not ending. Look at my feet, bro. Let me look at that. You, I'm on balls, bro. It's my setup. I adopted the Imangaji. You know, n no more than six things on your desk, which is kind of like I'm kind of violating the moment with the food and everything. But I use a. A paper. I always like remind myself. One in four, four. In field poverty, cold homes kill. Back to USC strike. 800 PNO staff sacked by Zoom. I keep this all the time while having quotes. Aside, the desire of gold is not for gold, it is for the means of freedom and benefit by Ralph Waldo Emerson G. The one who chooses the beginnings of the. of the voice? The fuck? I can't even read my own handwriting. The one who chooses the beginnings of the role chooses the place it leads to. It is the means that determines the end. Henry Emerson Osbick G. To live unlike everyone else, you have to do what everyone else w won't. MJ DeMarco G. The ambitious are often criticized by those who have given up. Grant, Grant Cardone. Never fear the haters, you can't reach your potential without them. G. Grant Cardone. Never lower your, your, tar your target. Increase your actions, gratitude Johnny. Jesus Christ, why is it hard to read my own handwriting, man? This is messy and dirty. Working hard is easy for me, Lloyd Frontera. And this is not a real person, it's actually a fictional character in the manual I read before, which I kind of, honestly, I've kind of given up on reading manual. I read manual about three days ago, and I just haven't read it since. Usually I try to read it every single day. Like, I just cut back on it heavily. I used to be one of them guys that were commenting in the section below, I have like 200 comments. You can find me, I'm at the struggler on this um Disquiz. Fucking Disquiz. It's a stupid app. Stupid waste of my time. Um and I kind of just took a break from that. I took a, a big step back because I knew that if I could if I just kept going, it would end up costing me. And it'll cost me heavy. And I don't want it to be cost heavy. <laughs> it's just, there's no there's no benefit, there's no tangible benefit. And then reading about the quotes. 
having the world's best idea will do you no good unless you act on it. Curtis Grant. People who want milk shouldn't sit at the stool in the mirror in the middle of the field in the hopes that a cow will back up on back on them. Curtis Grant again. Comfort is the killer of men. I don't know who said that. Or killer of man. It is impossible but it's impossible but that is what makes it it's impossible, but that what makes it a worthy challenge. Jesus Christ, man! There's always some. There's always work to do. You just aren't looking. At big at free up t top g bro free up top g free up top g. I think it's gonna be free anyway. I think that's the top g thing. I think he's gonna be, he's gonna come out within like the next month. They can't keep him for like six months in a row with no charge. Come on, bro. They already kept him for three months. So another month. What are they gonna find him with another month? It's already been three. I don't understand. Anyways, that doesn't. Honestly, what can I do? I'm broke. I have no power. Money is power, right? Showing off is the fool's idea of glory, Bruce Lee, which I I really like. I gotta make a separate video on that. But I'll touch on the topic quick, quickly. Showing off is the fool's idea of glory. I used to like. Well, in the beginning of my business, I used to show off like a few hundred pounds. Then I then slowly over the course of time, for a few thousand, and I just stopped. Because of this quote showing off is the fool's idea of glory and the quote was on like a facebook post and the top was showing off the four ideas of glory and then bob bruce lee and it was adrian brona versus maida their boxing match and adrian brona wasn't training at the time he wasn't putting the hard work and dedication in like from what said and he just suffered immensely because of it and this kind of woke me up and kind of taught me how i shouldn't be showing off at all I haven't made enough money to show off and even if I do make enough money to show off I don't want to show off it's even then because even then it's a full idea of glory what who do I impress idiots that's it I'm not impressing myself I'm constantly chasing social validation right I'm constantly chasing something external but happiness is something internal happiness is something within it's pure self-satisfaction and fulfillment with your own self and your achievements not with the constant praise of others because at some point you get used to that shit humans are creatures of habit you get used to it, it becomes a habit to get praised you get used to it and you're not going to be satisfied with it and you're going to try to end up trying to chase something more so that's why rich kids that are trust on babies always end up chasing something more they end up falling into stupid habits into debt into gambling Because they have no concept of money, they have no concept of value, they skewed their value. Money is not scarce. Scarce equals value, like I said before. But money isn't scarce anymore. Or it wasn't even scarce in the first place. Because they're rich from, from, from birth. They end up doing stupid shit like Prince Harry. But I don't even know what he's doing anymore. Like he, he says like, social media has ruined my life, this isn't that. But then he publishes a book about his family secrets. But then he goes on to social media and promotes it constantly to promote his book to make money but then he gets with a girl who's been used and abused Meghan Markle who pulled the race card at first chance he was sleeping with NBA stars before the whole team in fact to get that seven inch up. You see where I'm going with this? This is a shit on Prince Harry. He'll probably be richer than I am. I'm into the potato guys. This is if I don't reach my goals, which is 100 million net worth. But even that. He says he hates social media, but he leverages it in order to make money. Which is pure hypocrisy, but it's his life. Honestly, it's his life. What can I do? I'm broke. Let me go to my other quote. Burn the business plan, ignite execution. MJ DeMarco. Normal is not something to aspire to. It's something to get away from. By Jane Foster. Those are the quotes I really resonate with. Especially with the 800 P and O staff sacked by P by Zoom. By the young socialist, and this cost me 20p to buy. It actually cost 50p, but I bought for 20p because that's all I had at the time. I mean, 
And the woman is like, oh, but you don't have any more? You don't have Thaipi more? Like, trying to haggle me. Like, she's a socialist, but she tries to use capitalism when it benefits her. But socialism, when it benefits her, it's like, it's all just... And she was like 60 or something, who worked in the NHS all her life. It was a nurse who took the best moves at the time. And that's not a mocker, by the way. She can live her life. I don't even care. Her life almost fucking expired. Like, she still gets successful when she's 70, but it'd be very, very difficult to enjoy it because of her age. And she trusts the system, where the system has been mutilated and molested in order to profitize off the lives of those below. And she was advocating, she was, she was literally, what the fuck are you doing, man? You're 60. And she's protesting. <laughs> In front of them. you can't see them now, but this is the faces I taped over. Protesting, I taped over. Like, what the fuck are you protesting for? What will you achieve? What will you solve? You're broke. You're fucking broke. Stupid. I, I, I look at this constantly for, as a reminder, not for necessarily for motivation, because motivation comes and goes. Motivation is real, we all know this. I look at this as a reminder of how stupid people can be. You can rely on it, how they can rely on their job purely when they, they don't understand that job is not reliable. I don't understand this, especially during COVID as well. You should have realized during the pandemic that your job is not going to supplement your income forever. This is why so many people during COVID got rich. Because they realized, oh shit, COVID isn't the only way I need to make money. My job can be taken away from me just like that. Their complacency was completely removed, like I said before in the beginning of the video or another video. And thus forth, they decided to change their lives. Uh, the graph, like I said before, complacency, high complacency, lower probability to succeed. Lower complacency, high, high probability to succeed. This is why so many people during the pandemic decided to go online, make income the other way, read books, educate themselves, try to make money in another way, try to live a life worth a living, and they're, now they're living a much better life than before. Probably with me, yeah, I spent COVID playing video games. I got proficient in the video games that are proficient in my life. It ended up costing me. Anyway, these people that still fall into the illusion of traps, I tape over them with quotes because it's like symbolic how the way I approach life and the way how I see things. Like, I can keep looking at that them and subscribe to the ideology and be 60 and protesting in front of college and no one gives a fuck, haggling some fucking 17 year old over 30 fucking p, over a 50p fucking news, newspaper that I now use as my fucking shitty mouse pad or I can choose to spend those 50 years in entrepreneurship becoming wildly successful living out my dreams living a much better life than she is like every college student just walks past her they don't give a fuck nobody gives a fuck and even if you go online still even then nobody gives a fuck welcome to reality you might give a fuck right now watching my YouTube video because you understand the value that I'm giving, the value that I'm bringing, the, the fact that I'm fucking waking up to reality. And most people, like, they asked me, they told me, my friend before, which I kind of dissed myself from him, he's a bit, he's a bit of a, I'm going to be honest with you guys, he's a bit of like a low level stoner idiot. I don't, I don't mean to say this in a horrible way, I'm pretty sure you agree with this as well. No, he agreed with this as well. Like, he falls into bad habits and to negative traits. He obviously wants to change as well, I see that, it's very admirable of him. He has so much potential, but he doesn't realize the potential because he falls into bad habits very, very quickly and very, very easily. I remember, I thought before, I called him Stephen. He's not the same Stephen as before. Let's think of another name. Mark. I don't know a Mark. Mark and Michael. I don't know Michael. Mark and Michael in the bathroom. I went I went to cinema with Mark and Michael and um, Gerald, I went, mean, that's white ass fucking names. Mark, Michael, and Gerald. These kids come from relatively good families and they think they're so hard smoking weed, doing bad, doing drugs, doing bad habits at a young age, giving them some brain damage in some cinema bathroom after watching some of the most mediocre movie ever. You know, what I did when I did what happened when, uh, when um, Gerald and Mark and, um, and Michael. Bust out the weed and the tobacco and a little bit with the beat of the balloons, laughing gas. You know what I did? I left. 
and I walked away and I did not look back. Because I knew if I surrounded myself with those people, more and more I would become more like them. That's... That's... It might not seem too dangerous to you, but that's immensely dangerous to me. I don't want to compromise my character. I don't want to compromise my personality. I don't want to compromise anything of me. It's change myself for the sake of other people. Oppressing other people that I don't even like. That's a classic Fight Club quote, right? I haven't watched the movie. I don't think I ever will. I might watch the movie today. I have shit to do today, so I don't think I will. It's a classic Fight Club quote. We buy shit that we don't even like. Uh, to impress people we don't even like. We buy shit we don't need to impress people we don't even like. Consumers. We're a generation of men raised by women. Welcome to reality. And I give this as a constant reminder to myself that you can be better. Be bitter. A lot of people choose to be bitter. A lot of people choose to be stupid. A lot of people choose to be to choose the easy way. A lot of people choose to be action fakers. I remember I was white out this time. I'm calling I already used Mark, Michael, Gerald. Quite white, out of state names. Gerald's quite a nice name. I like quite the name. I like the name Gerald. It might seem geeky, but you could be. There's always two like sides of things. You could be the geeky Gerald. You could be the geek Gerald, or you could be the Chad Gerald. You know what I'm saying? One who's who like fucking sips wine. He does wine tasting. He like sniff the wine, talk about flowers, and then taste the wine. But he doesn't. He doesn't drink it. He just spits it back out into the cup. Type shit. The sophisticated Gerald. Come from a nice family, who's successful, who's young in shape, or you could be the fucking geek Gerald who plays video games on a computer. It's all of your choices, right? It's not the name or the clothes that make the man. It's the man who makes the clothes and it makes the name. That needs to be a fucking a separate video. <laughs> that <makes sense. sighs> I've been sitting in my house all day just recording. <laughs> <sighs> oh low iron. Oh low iron man. I'm gonna, eat, I'm gonna eat my apple with banana and then drink my vitamins. We're going along with some video editing work. Some sales work. Yay, yippee! I feel like I completed this video. Alan said everything I need to say. But I completed this video. I want to talk about this last point and then I'm gonna go. I can't check the next video, don't be sad. Hey, don't be sad. Fuck. Yeah, I've, been, I've been in this video for like fucking 7 minutes now. 18 minutes. God, I got some quality of all. What I want in this life brutal determination. Determination, consistency, and AT. Add the day on everything. Think about the money. Hard work is easy for me by Suho Kim. The manual is called. Um, the greatest, the greatest estate developer, and I believe you should read, give it a read, even if you don't like manual, because it teaches you about hard work ethic, about teamwork, about teamwork makes the dream work, about how your choices and your actions dictate how people view you. Everyone saw Lloyd Frontera or Suho Kim, who's inhabiting for, for Frontera, as a bum, as a joke, as a piece of shit, as like a lazy piece of shit, the trash of the count, the count family. The second son, who's a piece of shit, and you know what he did, or the first son, or the other, I think he's like, no, he's the first son, the first son who's a piece of shit, the first, the firstborn of shit, or something like that, and you know what he did when Suho Kim, like Florian Frontera died, his soul died, he became brain dead, and then Suho Kim took over, and the, my favorite quote from Suho Kim was, "Hard work is easy for me." It's hard work is easy for me. It's quite contradictory, but it's very interesting in the sense that. Like, his idea of hard work isn't that, oh, it's super hard, I push myself constantly. Hard work for him is just the, is his natural basis of his existence. Taking action is his life. And since then, he's built roads, he's built houses, he's built valuable infrastructure, he's built castles, he's appeased the, the royal family, he's helped save the, the queen. I'm, I'm spoiling the story right now, by the way. Spoilers ahead. 
<laughs> Spoiler to head. Sorry, guys. And he's completely changed and reinvented his life because of his choices and his actions. And which is why I like the quote so much. Hard work is easy for me. Then I wrote my routine here that I don't follow. I wrote another routine. It's a 5 a.m. routine. I woke up at 4, 4, 4 5 a.m. today, which I could possibly follow this routine. Exercise, meditation, walk, abs, run, gratitude journal, breakfast. I just have my breakfast by now. I think I'll have some oats. And some, I just have plain oats and a banana. Yo. And then I'll probably get with some work. I don't, I don't like this routine. I might, I'll have to change it. I want to take it off the wall, but it's going to damage the wall, so I'll just leave it there. Books, I need to read. I'm only on. I've only read two books. This is the same thing with Paul, right? I've got another video. But Joe. You guys find his name. Paul, Joe. Was his name Paul again? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> you guys called me out. I think I think his name was like Stephen. His actual name. Um first name and he's 50 years old I don't know if you guys can find him 50 years old Stephen working 9 to 5 I don't know I'm not gonna tell you I can, I can look at my phone real quick and I can find out but I'm not gonna tell you he told me so how many books have you read I said I already read one I was in the car really reading one at the time. And I just finished my book recently, Millionaire Fast Lane. I'm reading another one. I'm more close to finishing another one. And he says, oh, that's why you lack focus. Because you only read one book. He didn't even ask how much I've learned from this book. To him, it was like another cock measuring thing. And Hamza was pissed at it as well. Hamza, who's read hundreds of books, was angry at that. Because he was like, what is this to you? What is reading to you? Is it learning? Is it educating yourself? Is it trying to change your life? Is it trying to peak? Is it trying to gander into the minds of those that are brilliant? Or is it a cock measuring thing that you're using to try to impress other people? Which ties into the watch. Watch who you're taking advice from. Who are you taking fucking advice from? Our average Stephen Joe over here? Oh, you only read one book? That's so stupid. It's not, it's not a cock measuring thing. How much you learn from that book? Have you done anything after you've read that book? Have you started that business? Has your mindset changed at least? Has your beliefs changed? Are you now on the correct path in life? What are you doing after you read that book? How has that book impacted your life? That's a much better question how many books have you read? Because if you say how many books have you read, the number can just be an arbitrary number. Oh yeah, I just read 500 books. You can read 500 books because you can still be a jackass. It's, it's a difference, right? There's a difference. You'd be hyper successful if you read 500 books. Okay, impressive. Or you could be a jackass lazy at home, like me. Jackass lazy as fuck. A bum. And read 500 books. And it'll just be an arbitrary number that nobody's fucking impressed by it because you haven't executed that 500 books. There's a baseline assumption that with the 500 books you will be successful. If you read 500 books, you'll be successful. When, if anything, it's honestly action faking. The, only, the whole point of reading books is it is productive. The whole point of reading books is to gander into the minds of those that are brilliant and to try to steal what they know from them. Never mind, throw. Be back. <sighs> try to steal what they know in order to have a higher life of success. That's the whole point god god he's on both boys listen guys that was the last point i was no oh, I, I didn't tell the last point i'm gonna call him another guy oh, that OG, i don't know any of these guys i'm gonna call him paul all right paul he's around my age paul like that movie the paul the bear paul it's pretty quite the paul yeah it's quite like um a dredgingly average name like Joe but then like the average Joe but then I also think about Joseph 
a more sophisticated name that it's all still derived from the from the name Joe, or Joe is derived from the name Joseph. And I also think about Joe Rogan, who's an incredibly sophisticated, curious, incredibly successful martial artist, brilliant mind, brilliant individual. Which is tied to my point. The name does not make the man. The clothes do not make the man. It's the man that makes the clothes. It's the man that makes the name. If, bro, and then um, my stepdad was saying something funny to me. He said, "So what if you wear a crop top?" And I was like, "Uh, okay, you want me?" But think about it more. If a hyper masculine male wore a crop top, it would just be sexy because you could just see his abs, which is what I've seen recently. Well, that's what thirst trap of Markiplier, and he was wearing a crop top, right? It's fucking weird. It's fucking weird, guys. What the fuck's wrong with you guys? <laughs> I don't like Markiplier. I've been watching him since I was young, but he's like some—he's a pretty sexy, masculine individual who's rich as fuck, who's humble, down to earth, and he wore a crop top, and you can see his abs and his pecs and everything, and his V taper and everything, and this was viewed as sexy. Because he was a man, not a boy. What did I say? Of course I'm not. <laughs> and my friend, friend Paul over here, he's my age, and he said he wants to start a business next year. Huh? And he said he wants to make his business plan. And his business plan. I don't, I don't agree with business plan, I agree in action, but his business plan was shit. Oh shit, it's, it's, it's doomed to fail. And he's not going to be successful, he's going to be a dream entrepreneur forever. By all likelihood, by all metrics, he's going to be a dream entrepreneur. Paul, if you, Paul, if you're watching this? What the fuck? What are you doing? And I told him this and he got mad at me. I don't care. I don't like to care. After I talk about it in this video, he'd be like, he probably messaged me because he realizes it's him. Oh, you talk about me in a video, I'll take this video down. I don't care. I'm not mentioning your name. The viewers don't know you. But the viewers know your actions, which in, which they know you enough from your actions. And your actions are indicative of a lazy individual. One year? Start like business now. Do what you can now. The fuck? You're already 18. Poor. The fuck's wrong with you? Stupid, 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 stupid. Ugh, very stupid, guys. Listen, that's my final message. What should you take advice from? And if someone is trying to tell you the bitter truth, trying to the brutal truth, there might be some value to them, but not always. Alright? There was someone who was telling me the brutal truth, and then up just subscribing to another philosophy that I disagreed with as well. I will not end up making them successful, and I will end up fucking making them a midlife crisis, and depressed and sad. Up to them. Focus on yourself. Of oh, classic advice. Focus on yourself, because no one else will listen to you. I, I gave the example for another video, which I have to upload now. But um, let's say I'll give that um, uh, thing example now again. But let's say you're like you're like we're both you're both here, right? You're both low on the spectrum. This is medium, and this is high. You're both low, and you find something that you really like that's gonna make you really successful. And then you start to pursue it, and you start to make good results about it. And you start shouting at everyone, Hey, I got good results from this. Because people, when they start the business, they can't shut the fuck up with their business, for the most part. Most people that start the business, they're like, Oh, I'm so smart, I start my business, this and this and that. They, 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 they think they're so intelligent, they can't shut up. They end up realizing that they can't change other people. That people, their envy and jealousy just bruise instead, and hatred. And oh yeah, oh, he's lucky. Something like that just brews instead of actual people that are successful that come out of it. What do I see? So you're here, both. I'm gonna call him. I might. I might just gonna read his names. Let's use some Chinese names instead. I'm gonna call him. I'll use Korean names. I don't know. You guys, I don't know if you guys will understand Vietnamese names because they're like they're like new in. And Chun. No, you know, you understand Chun. I hope. I'm Chun. It's my household name, bro. <laughs> so I've got Chun on the side here. 
who's, who's, who's starting to get successful, I got Nguyen. The name is Nguyen. You, you, get a lot of, you see him, Nguyen. Nguyen. Or Nguyen. Nguyen. It's Vietnamese names, right? I got Nguyen here. Who's an average Joe. He's a bit of a bum. Going through the education system. About to get a job. Or has a job already. He's complacent. He's okay with life. Maybe got a girlfriend. And you got Chan. He's not complacent. He might or might not have a girlfriend. Probably usually doesn't. It's quite uncomfortable with reality. Quite, in fact, he hates it. He's buying something that he likes, that pays the bills, that has a profit, that, su that succeeds all the tenants that I told you about before in the other video. What business should I start? What am I good at? What am I passionate about? And most importantly, what value do I bring to the market? Because you're passionate about fucking frying pan, and you can't make a very revolutionary frying pan that exceeds the value of everyone else and sell it for a lower price to get high sales, to scale more, then you're not going to get anywhere. And you should not chase that fashion if it's not going to pay. Anyway, Chan over here is increasingly uncomfortable with reality. He's increasingly uncomfortable. He's very uncomfortable. He hates it. He finds something and he tells Nguyen about it and he starts slowly going up. His SMV, his sexual market value, his overall value as a man, slowly but surely increases. And when he's up here, he says to Nguyen, Yo! This is Chan talking. Yo, Nguyen! And you're like, what? He's like, bro, I just found this amazing business venture, bro. It, like, the market demand, both of us can do it. Nothing happens. So what happens? Yuen stays here. Chan slowly but surely keeps going up. But Yuen still stays here. And before you know it, there's an exponential gap between the two. This is my problem with leading by example. You cannot lead by example. You can't. They either follow you or they don't. It's cutthroat. Sometimes it's yin and yang, but usually it's black and white when it comes to shit. They either follow you or they don't. Absolutely cutthroat. Because by the time Chun's here, so he's already, like, this is high, and Chun's already reaching the high. He's already gone through the barrier middle. He's made a bunch of fucking money. He maybe he's got a girlfriend or two on the side, like, living the, the Kevin Nguyen style, the fucking. The, he's Kevin Nguyen making a bunch of money off e-commerce, he's, he's, he's retired his parents, he's super successful, he's living the life that people could only dream of. He's on holiday in Bali all the time, he's like drinking Hennessy and cognac and a martini by the beach, uh, or like a fucking pina colata by the beach. He's having a wonderful life, relaxing on Instagram, take pictures, ching, 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 like a little motherfucker, man. But where's Nguyen? The person he told all those years ago. Oh, bro, you need to get on this business opportunity, you need to do this, you need to do that. Where is he? Fucking here. Just only a slightly bit up. And Chan's here. Now there's an exponential gap between them. Which is why leading by example is not viable for 99% of people. Those 1% of people that you find that will follow you, that will revere you, that will respect you, that will re replicate what you do, that will be equally or maybe perhaps even more successful than you, that you take as disciples. Perfect, beautiful. But for the most part, leading by example is absolute bullshit. No one talks about that, by the way. No one talks about that. I think I'm the only person who talks about that. I talk about it in my book core as well. I think I haven't talked about it enough. I have talked about it like in that example, but not enough. Like, genuinely not enough. There needs to be like, at least three more examples to be drilling to people. Drilling, that's a stab. Drilling. And to people, they genuinely understand. A better theorem on that because that that boggles my mind. That that obviously rocks my head. I lost my head. I'll do it in the next video. Suey. Let's stop saying Suey at the end. Let's just say something else. Nah. Sorry, no, guys. People call people call this cringe when I smile at the camera and I wave. They said it was zesty and it was weird and it was cringe. Do I look like a give a fuck, bro? God. I'm honest to myself. I'm truthful to myself. I don't change for no one. That's how I am. I give a smile to the camera and I wave. Smile might be fake. But I need some smile. I need some happy. I'm spreading that happy, positive energy. I, I, I thought this is an image before as well. But I have to in this video here, guys. I, I talk a lot. I know. I don't, I don't talk bullshit, okay guys?
You guys can verify this. You might think it's bullshit, but if you think it's bullshit, if you guys want bullshit, well, I'm clearly not, then you honestly are probably, you probably are a bullshit person. You can't see the value in my speech. I saw images of myself, and I was looking, like, just monotone face like this. I was looking, and I was also smiling. It was, it was, it was a parallel. There's a difference. Like, one was just monotone face, the other one was smiling. The one that was smiling had infinitely better vibe to it, had infinitely better energy to it. Which is why like, I like smiling, I like waving at the camera at the end. I think it spreads positive energy, which, which is my whole, my whole purpose. My whole shtick. So I'm gonna change. I don't give a fuck. I need to be hard. I have like a something. Do the hard work, especially if you don't feel like it. <laughs> I need to eat food because I'm starving. Uh, I woke up at 4 a.m. and it's now 8 or 3. I've been awake for nearly 4 hours. 4 45. For 3 hours, 15, 15 minutes. And I'm hungry. So I'm gonna eat a banana. Yo. I'll eat the apple and then eat the banana with oats. Yummy. Mmm. Have a food, guys. <laughs> food. I will probably do work today. Busy, busy day. I got work to do. Catch you guys in the next video. See you. 36 minutes. God damn, bro. Let's start cleaning up the desk. Uh, let's see how much I read today. I read it in the morning when I woke up. Come with. Me. I keep saying Sui and then I ended up not doing anything. Your Fifty Shades of Grey, one hour of reading today in the morning. I'm planning to finish this book soon. Um, well, it says I have no battery on this. Yesterday I had 34 minutes, which was quite abysmal. Barely read anything. I read quite a lot today. I'm on page, so you guys can read with me, along with me as well. I'm on page 372 in the unscripted book. I am very, very close to finishing. It's 478, I believe. I'm like 100 pages off to finishing this book. And then I'll probably move on to The Psychology of Sales by Brian Tracy. So you guys can read along with me as well. And then Atomic Habits. I only want to read one book at a time. But I actually, there are only 200 page books where I can blast through. Like, I remember when I was reading Christine for like 3 or 4 hours a day. I blasted through this book, this unscripted book. I got like a hundred pages within that, within that time frame, but I understood a lot of it, got a lot of value out of it. So, it's all just a time investment. Uh, I want to read these books so I can increase my 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 life, my sales pitch, my sales thing. Read along with me. Catch you guys in the next video. Sweet.